Osteopathy is grounded in um, science and uh, modern medicine. Well, the um, discoverer of osteopathy was Dr. Andrew Taylor Still, and he was very clear in stating that he did not invent this. He merely discovered the principles of it. These are the fundamental principles of nature, of life, um, of the laws of physics, the laws of science, and what makes osteopathic medicine different is that it's the understanding that the role of the doctor is to work in harmony with the way the laws of nature are. And if we can understand how nature is working, then we can get behind it and work alongside with it. The osteopathic physician takes into account uh, all aspects of patient care. We actually look at the patient from a, um, the perspective of understanding the human body as a whole. We, we look at what we call the, the four tenets, um, that the body uh, functions as a unit, uh, that uh, structure and function um, are dependent on one another, uh, that the structure and function allows the human body to have the inherent capacity to heal itself. And given those tenets, um, the, the fourth tenet of this is that all rational therapy is based on all of the above. So if you're familiar with human anatomy, if you're familiar with the physiology of the human body and all of the components that put that together, that's the, the rationale with which we approach our patient. So we don't necessarily chase a symptom. Uh, most osteopathic physicians that subscribe to the philosophy, they're actually looking for the root of the cause of the problem. The experience is one that begins with all the usual history taking and physical examination and we're using a stethoscope and an otoscope and a thalmoscope and a reflex hammer and all the usual tools in an office-based setting. In a hospital-based setting, we'll be using the technologies of that hospital, depending on the illness the person walks in with. And what we're doing that's different is done with our hands. When we use our hands to make a diagnosis, try to find cause of a problem, and address that cause with our hands, we're really dealing with the biophysics of the body. We might be affecting the chemistry and the biology of their body in profound ways, but we're doing it through physical means. And this business of interacting with subtle forces present in the patient's body with the hands is what osteopathic medicine is all about. Well. You know, we look at a lot of different aspects of an individual. I listen to the story that they tell me. I actually look at them physically. I do a traditional uh, physical examination of an individual. But then uh, this special training that we have in osteopathic medicine allows us to actually physically make contact with their physiology, their function, and diagnose how, how healthy it is whether it's active in various parts of their body and for their whole body. In the understanding of normal health in a human being, through our hands, are not assessed in any other way. There are not a lot of ways to measure effectiveness of lymphatic circulation, effectiveness of venous return, effectiveness of arterial perfusion, unless it's so broken down as to cause uh, swelling or a temperature change. It's not really something that shows up in the usual tests of uh, medical technology. We have ways of assessing these things and determining when they are not functioning optimally with our hands. When they're not functioning optimally just slightly, and this gives us clues as to where cause might lie in a bigger problem that does show up on the test. One of Andrew Taylor Still's most important and fundamental principles in osteopathy is that your ability to help somebody get better is predicated on your deep, evolving understanding of normal. And that's not just a mental understanding. It's also a palpatory understanding. And when we put our hands on somebody, there's a continual 
communication back and forth between our hands and their body and our mind integrating what's happening moment to moment. It's not something that's pre-designed. Each person is treated as an individual in that visit in a way that's exactly correct for their system. And when they come back, we assess, gee, what changed? What's the same? We ask them, how are they feeling? What's better? What's not better? And that helps us to build the kind of treatment that we're gonna do. But it's not just about lining up bones. It's much, much more than that. It's to, to be able to have somebody come back to themselves is a tremendous step towards healing. The, this is an art, and actually medicine in its best is an art, whether the skill set is the hands-on treatment, or if it's surgery, or if it's you know, fine-tuning um, you know, endocrine medications or whatever. Medicine really is an art. I think the Greeks understood that, and it was no accident that they put the practice of medicine under the um, auspices of the god Apollo, who was also the god of music. Um, there are a lot of similarities between music and medicine. Uh, both are right brain, left brain. Um, both require years of practice. Uh, one is always practicing music, one is always practicing medicine. Um, you learn this through, through the, the working with a master and seeing other people practice. And it's also, you can't know music except by experiencing it. And the same thing is true for osteopathic treatment. It's hard to know what this is without experiencing it. So I, I see this very much as, a, as part of the art of medicine, a big part of the art of medicine.